Islamic modernism an attempt to reinterpret the religion to subject Islam to a, <clears throat> a progressive interpretation so that it can fit in with the modern world so that America can sit down and have dinner with Islam. So in the United States while I was there I saw this strange version of American Islam emerging from a large section of the African-American Muslim community an American version of Islam <laughs> that America would be comfortable with and sit down and have dinner with this Islam. Islamic modernism trying to make Islam to be in harmony with the modern world. But the Islam of Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam is today becoming what it was at the time when it emerged. Something gharib, something strange, something different. Having said that, I don't need to, this, to deliver the rest of the lecture because you now can understand the analysis which follows. And there are many opinions that you now have to discard and throw it into the garbage bin. When once you hold on to this hadith of the Prophet Muhammad On September the 11th, the United States was attacked. We know from eyewitnesses that there were two aircrafts which struck at the Twin Towers in Lower Manhattan. And uh, it could be that the, the aircrafts themselves caused the uh, buildings to collapse. It could also be they got some help for some dynamite and so on planting before. We know from eyewitnesses that there was a third aircraft which crashed in Pennsylvania. And no less an authority than the White House itself confirmed uh, that that aircraft, the, the plan was for that aircraft to target Air Force One and to target the White House. And we have unconfirmed reports because no one see, no one saw, eh? and there was no evidence on the ground. Absolutely. Astonishing, isn't it? A huge aircraft slams into a building and there is no evidence that the aircraft ever existed. The Pentagon. Hmm? America was attacked on September the 11th in circumstances which were absolutely suspicious. Who attacked America on September the 11th? And we have said that there is a massive cover-up on the part of the Bush administration. And we have anticipated that those who have information so far concealed will eventually release that information in order to embarrass the US government as part of a strategy to bring down America. And so CNN is going to be broadcasting it. And the New York Times is going to have a field day. Hmm? And all those who control the media in the United States are now going to go to work to lavishly publish all of this information which demonstrates beyond doubt that the U.S. administration was involved in a massive cover-up. Who attacked America on September the 11th? We used a method. We said, since we do not have the evidence which can be used in a court of law, let us look to see who has benefited. And when we use that, that method of analysis, we have come to the conclusion that the only beneficiary <laughs> of the September 11th attack on America has been far and away the state of Israel. There is a little booklet outside. A Muslim responds to the attack 
on America. It's just about 25, 28 pages. I want to suggest to you, and it's very cheap, I think maybe two dollars. I want to suggest to you it might be a good idea to take this booklet and give it out to people who you think ought to have a little bit of brainstorming. Because when they read this, they'll be stunned. They won't get this in their newspapers and from the mainstream media in this country. But when they read this, I think they're going to have, for some of them, an intellectual wake-up call. So that booklet is downstairs. We said that those who attacked America, therefore, must have at their core the Israeli Mossad. And they must have benefit and help from many others within the United States, within the administration, even from within the White House. When we look at their strategy, we see that they put on board the aircraft a large number of Saudis. Sounds suspicious. Why so many Saudis? And these are not Saudis who are well known for their Islamic fervor, for being what they call militants. No, these are middle of the road, normal Saudis who drive BMWs. Huh? People who attended American universities, for example. They were on board the aircraft and they died when the aircraft crashed. So these were the hijackers, except that one of them read in the newspapers that he was dead. So he, he went to the Saudi government and he said to the go Saudi government, it seems to me as though I'm alive. <laughs> the Saudi newspapers published this article which I read with my own eyes. This particular student had studied in Minnesota, I think, in the early 1990s. And in 1995, perhaps, he had reported both to the local police and to the Saudi embassy in the United States that someone had broken into his apartment and stolen his passport. Whoever did that used that passport to hijack his identity and so they could put him on board uh, the aircraft. And so the planning for September the 11th, 2001 started many, many years before. Which reminds me, I must tell you, that when I arrived in New York in April 1991, through Allah's leave and kindness, within a matter of six months in New York, I had already been pushed to a very high profile position, a very well known in the entire New York metropolitan area. And then in November 91, when I had gone to the State University of New York in Stony Brook, someone broke into my apartment and stole only my passport. That's all. So if ever you get the news that Imran Hussein blew up the moon, <laughs> You'll understand the background. They're holding it. They've not as yet used it. 